Thank you all. Você estava falando do quanto você esperava dessa luta, esperava uma briga, seria divertido, uma festa. E como é que foi para você? Não, há um microfone lá. Ah, é isso. Sim, foi o que eu esperava. Eu vi o que eu esperava. Eu vi o que eu achei que eu iria ver. He's just, you know, Shogun, Shogun. Man. Ele, he Shogun é o Shogun. With, uh, Ele me pegou com uma enxurrada ali no final. Hurt, out, I mean, não me machucou, não apaguei. To him for sure, eu respeito but, uh, muito ele, what I expected. I mas just, foi o que eu esperei. I, uh, eu acho que eu hesitei um pouquinho demais, talvez. Eu estava me sentindo bem ali, eu acho que eu like estava like 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 machucando ele quando eu acertei os golpes, mas deixei minha cabeça entrar ali, eu parei de chutar, eu chuto bem forte, eu não chutei, eu não fiz wrestling, eu só fui lá e comecei a... Entrar numa briga. It is what it is. I mean, mas é o que é. It's tough to deal with right now, é difícil but, uh, lidar com isso agora, mas. I'll be back for sure. I, I know eu I voltarei hard, com I certeza. Eu sei que eu bato time. forte, eu sei que eu aguento o golpe. Mas o ponto que ele me acertou, eu não apaguei nada assim. Mas ele continuou indo e. E eu não. Ele foi muito agressivo, que é, é o que você espera dele. Eu tentei fazer o mesmo, mas eu não cheguei a Não, 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 não. Eu com certeza não, não discordo. Você não precisa pagar para ser um nocaute técnico. Eu estava acordado, eu só não estava me defendendo. E ele continuou golpeando e golpeando. E eu não golpei de volta. Eu entendo eles pararem. Ele é duro. When I was hitting him, that quando was eu tava a batendo was, nele, when I would catch foi bom. Him like that, quando eu acertei ele algumas vezes, him, I didn't keep eu posso throwing. ter balançado, mas eu não continuei. Só, a força no, dele no, te surpreendeu? Mean, não, that, like, não foi nada man, and, como se ele tivesse me acertado <risos> e acabou a luta. Eu, eu there, sempre I'm penso isso like, quando, oh, quando eu entro lá, eu fico nervoso pensando se esse cara, pô, será que... Esse cara vai me dar um soco que eu vou dormir, mas nada que eu nunca senti antes, eu estava perfeitamente bem. Eu não estou com tantos hematomas quanto eu achei que eu teria, mas estou bem. Quando ele começou a golpear no final ali, eu não golpei de volta e foi por isso que fui parado. E toda vez que eu acertei ele, eu parei e ele continuava indo. Você tem falado sempre que você admira muito ele, que você sempre viu ele lutar. Como foi a experiência entrar lá contra um cara que você assiste a lutar há muito tempo? Foi com certeza muito legal, mas, mas eu não pensei nisso, para dizer a verdade. Eu pensei, tentei não pensar nele, tirar ele da minha cabeça, mas não foi nada que eu não esperava. Com certeza foi, foi uma briga. Eu não sei o que vocês pensavam, mas o que os fãs acharam, mas espero que vocês acham que foi um bom show. Daqui é, é difícil eu ver, mas eu espero que vocês tenham gostado do show. Eu fui lá e espero que todo mundo tenha gostado. Você conseguiu se divertir lá? Sim, eu me diverti, eu gosto dessas brigas. E para dizer a verdade, eu acho que eu posso fazer com qualquer um. Eu acho que o problema foi minha agressividade. Eu meio que tirei o pé do acelerador. Eu acho que você... Começou a desacelerar um pouco no segundo round. Você acha que o seu cardio, o seu gás, foi uma das razões que você não saiu do octógono com uma vitória? É, geralmente é um problema para mim. 
mas talvez isso estivesse na minha cabeça, eu não sei, mas eu não estava tão cansado. Eu não sei se eu parecia cansado, mas eu realmente não estava tão cansado quanto eu pensei que estaria. Eu estava bem, eu acho que com o calor, estava bem calor ali dentro, eu acho que meu, meu corpo sentiu o calor, mas eu fui melhor do que eu pensava. Como eu disse, eu tirei o pé do, do, do acelerador. Você está feliz com a sua performance? Você acha que a luta foi bem disputada? Você acertou bastante o Shogun? Você está feliz com a sua performance mesmo com a derrota? Não. Vocês já devem ter ouvido um milhão de vezes. Muita coisa assim se envolvida nisso. Uma viagem de 16 horas. A gente está aqui uma semana com meus treinadores. Vai ser uma dura viagem de volta para casa. Com certeza eu não estou feliz. Eu, eu queria a vitória, eu esperava a vitória. O, os altos são, são, os pontos altos são muito altos e os pontos baixos são muito baixos. Não sei, eu, a única coisa que eu posso levar, eu espero que todo mundo tenha gostado. Você disse no, que você tem uma base de wrestling. Você acha que você poderia ter usado isso ou, ou você ficou feliz em fazer uma briga com o Shogun? Eu não sei, é difícil dizer se eu deveria usar mais, mas eu gosto da briga, eu gostei da briga hoje, eu acho que eu posso vencer na maioria das vezes, eu só preciso ser um pouquinho mais inteligente, um pouquinho mais agressivo, ter um pouco dessa mentalidade do Shogun e ser mais agressivo lá dentro. Eu acho que muitas dessas vitórias vão começar a vir. Eu acho que eu não preciso fazer tanto wrestling. Não é tão divertido para mim, é, é tedioso. Eu quero luta divertida, eu quero ouvir o público. Mesmo se estivessem dizendo para eu morrer. Você varia entre vitórias e derrotas no UFC. O que, que você precisa mudar para conseguir uma, uma sequência de vitórias? Eu não sei. Eu preciso fazer meu dever de casa, estudar essa luta. Eu sinto que eu estou melhorando a cada vez que eu entro lá. Não sei se vocês conseguem ver isso, mas... Eu, 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 eu me senti melhor nessa luta do que na última. Sabe, às vezes as coisas acontecem e um, um erro, alguns erros lá dentro. Eu voltarei, eu me, eu me sinto bem. Você pode, poderia me botar para lutar amanhã, eu acho que eu poderia lutar. Eu quero voltar logo para lá. Eu sinto que eu posso vencer quase todos nessa categoria. Eu, eu sinto que eu consigo pegar aquele cinturão um dia. Se eu conseguir três ou quatro vitórias seguidas, eu vou chegar lá. Isso que eu ia te perguntar. Quando que você acha que você quer voltar a lutar? Eu estou pronto. Eu me... Claro que você tem algumas lesões entrando na, na luta, mas no ringue eu estava me sentindo bem, nada me machucando. Todas as pequenas lesões que eu tive durante o tempo, mas eu estava bem. Eu posso lutar assim que eles quiserem, me sinto bem. Há muitas pessoas que eu sei que eu posso Estão na, na minha frente, mas eu, eu sei que eu posso vencer hoje.
Boa noite, galera. Good evening, everyone. Can you analyze uh, your performance? What did you think of the fight? <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm playing. I knew the Vellante was a tough guy. He's, he's a kickboxer. And I began a little bit cautious. I thought he was going to try to take me down. He tried to take me down a little bit late. So he, he was he wanted to strike and good thing I got the win and, and the knockout. He's a tough guy, he deserves all the respect and definitely he, he he's a guy that's gonna give a lot of fights. Was this the fight that, that you expected? In reality I prefer to fight like this. A, a guy that a guy that's actually looking to fight. People, you fight someone with, who doesn't really want to fight, it, it's not that fun. So even when you, you strike, you get hurt more. I prefer this kind of fight. You have to put your game into the fight. I was happy with this fight with Vellante. He's a guy who's always striking and as, as I am, and I think it was a good fight. How did you feel in there, your, your gas tank and, and everything else? How were you feeling? I felt very well. I did a very good camp in Sao Paulo. Master Cordero gave me a little bit of instructions as well. Everything went well. I think that I, I was able to reach my goal, which was the win. And I think that the victory erases the pain and, and, and the injuries, injuries and everything. So I'm very happy and I'm going to continue. You have three consecutive wins that for the first time in a long time that you have a good sequence of victories. Does that make you think of asking for a fight or asking for some someone I've always fought the best I've never picked my opponents the UFC knows that and those things I, I, I leave that for my manager Eduardo he takes care of that he's paid for that so he takes care of that and very well paid actually my job is to train and to fight, so I have him to take care of those things. You said that you wanted to be more active this, this year. Do you know when you want to come back? Do you want to be able to have more fights this year? Thankfully, I, I don't have any injuries. The year before last, I, I had the Ultimate Fighter, and that's why I only fought once that year. And last year, I fought in Curitiba, and, and I had... A, a slight injury on, on my knee and, and I couldn't train as well today I'm cured and I, right now I'm thinking of going home and, and relaxing I think in a few days I'll have dinner with Eduardo and Master Rafael and, and we'll think of the next step I know that you want to rest but you said that you would wanted to fight twice again this year which is what you intended to do do you keep that after this fight? For sure. I hope to fight once or twice this year. Injuries are something that, that really get in our way as athletes. I don't have any injuries right now. So I'm going to go back home and relax. And go back to training as soon as possible. So that I can always be active. So when there's an, a date, I'll come back. My goal is to fight once or twice this year. It's your third victory in a row. Do you think that this win gets you ready to fight for the belt again? Man, I, I really... I'd be a hypocrite to say that, that I think I'd, I'm next. In my opinion, I think the next needs to be the, the winner of, of Glover and Gustafsson. I think they're ahead of me. And I think the winner of that fight deserves that chance to fight for the title. And Cormier and Johnson are fighting now in April. How do you see that fight? I think it's a tough fight for both of them. They fought before. Cormier won the fight. But Anthony Johnson knocked him down and everything. And Anthony Johnson, in my opinion, is the most dangerous guy in the division. He's got heavy hands. But Cormier is a very athletic guy. He's a very complete guy. He's good on the ground. He's very good on the wrestling. He's good 
with Muay Thai. It's a fight that I'd rather not put my money on anyone. It's 50-50. Whoever wins is, is going to be very merit, and the division is going to be very well represented. In some fights, you're, you're gassing in the first or second round. What we saw you tonight with the full gas thing until the end, did you change something in your camp? Did you, were you doing something wrong? I'm always trying to get better as an athlete. My stamina, my technique. And something that I always ask for God before the fight is for patience. The more calm I am, the better I fight. Sometimes when, when a person is nervous, you, you use too much strength when you don't need to. So really in training, I, I never, I don't gas as much as I do in the fight. So really the fight is very different from training. So you have to concentrate. And imagine it, it, it's training, because nervousness can take over. So if you think of the dimension of the event, people watching, the, this, it's all going to weigh against you. So you have to concentrate, fight calm, and have a lot of patience. I'm going to keep training hard. I'm an athlete who still needs to get a lot better in everything. I'm a good athlete, but I can you know, be a great athlete. I'm going to focus on my stamina, jiu-jitsu, wrestling to get even better. We spoke to Rafael dos Anjos, and he was talking about divisions and the, the need to, to have new divisions for the athletes avoid cutting weight. What do you think of that? I think that in the future is going to be inevitable. Boxing has a lot more divisions. I think in MMA the tendency is, is to have more divisions. I go down from 105 to 93 kilos, so I cut a lot of weight. I think that if there is more options in divisions, it would be better. There's a lot of fighters in all of MMA, so it would be better for all the athletes in the event. Good evening, Shogun. Congratulations. We noticed that since the beginning of the week, you're very happy. And you had a happy ending tonight. And we could also see that in the end of the fight, you, you hugged Rafael Cordeiro. What did you guys say in there? It was a, a long hug. And are you going to continue with this partnership with him? You, you know each other for a long time. You pause, but now you're back together. I think that in reality, during camp, we get closer to the trainers than to the family. So my family has become my whole team. So we become very close friends. And Master has been with me since I began fighting. So we have very close relationships. And I was very happy with this win. And I try to retribute the, the care of my fans. And no one can win a fight alone, so this victory is for me and for my team. And I think Master Rafael is the best trainer in the world. He deserves all respect. I think if you have the privilege to train under him, you're a very privileged guy. Before the fight, we were talking about the rivalry between Americans and Brazilians, and you said the Americans are a little bit ahead of Brazilian. And tonight, tonight the Brazilians were better than, than the Americans. Was that what you expected? Did you expect the Brazilians to dominate? Or did you believe that, in general, Brazilians would have more success here tonight? I actually didn't think of that. I analyzed the card and who could win or not. But I think that Brazil and, and the U.S. are the two countries that have the best athletes in the world. I think it's worldwide is where there's the best athletes between the two countries. A few years ago, Brazil was number one, and I think the U.S. has passed Brazil now. But it's a matter of time maybe for Brazil to, to be back being number one. And really, Brazil, the UFC in Brazil, put the best Brazilian team on this card tonight. Very tough guys. And it's... Even better to fight someone from another country. I'm a patriot. I fight for my country.
And I prefer fighting with a foreigner. Did you expect this energy from the crowd in, in Fortaleza? Everyone screaming your name and everyone cheering for you? When I was here two months ago, I felt that the people here in Fortaleza. And in the open workouts, I felt that. I felt that people were real fans. And I'm very happy to hear my name. I, I would, could hear that during the fight. I, that, that makes me grow in the fight. It helps a lot. And, and I have to thank everyone in, for, in Fortaleza. And thankfully, I was able to give back to them with a great knockout. You said that you talked about the nervousness that kind of gets in the way of your stamina. An experienced athlete like you, is that something, getting nervous, is that something you've always dealt with or is that something new? I always get nervous, actually. I think it's part of it. If whoever says they don't get nervous, they're lying. I think that, that before I could handle it better, I think that us as fighters, we, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. So we have to think that our, our goal is to give our best. The result, one has to win and one has to lose. So, so I always might put my goal as being the best and doing my best. And that makes me happy. So that makes me fight more relaxed. But really, to, today there's a lot more pressure. MMA in Brazil is, is huge. There's a lot of pressure from the media, from the fans. From the I think the athlete has to concentrate as much as possible so that doesn't weigh in. You've been coming, you were coming off for two wins, but they weren't decisive wins. Do you think that today is gonna, today's win is going to help you with that? I think so. I fought Little Nog. He's a very tough guy and I got a, a win. And in my last fight, my opponent is a guy that moves around a lot. And Vilante is a guy that kind of fights more stationary. So fighting a guy that moves around a lot is a lot more difficult to knock him out. So I was able to meet with Vilante and, and land and, and get the knockout. I was very happy and I think this victory really motivates me for my next fight. Still talking about controlling your anxiety and having more patience. I had the impression that the fight against Vellante, you were going in with condo combos and even when he was rocked, you didn't, you didn't move in. You were only moved in when you were sure. Was that part of your strategy? In reality, we, we want to win as soon as possible. I saw that he, he felt my hand a few times before, but I saw that he recovered quick, so I didn't expose myself. The last knockdown he felt, I, th I saw that he was very groggy, and I knew that if I went in there and, and I threw more punches, he was going to stop. So I was happy to be able to analyze and land. Because if I did that before, he was going to recover and, and I could expose myself. He could take me down or he could land a punch. So I was patient and cautious and I was able to move in at the right time. And after the fight, you said in your speech, you talked about dreams, that you fulfilled a lot of dreams in your life and you have a lot of more dreams in your fight. Naturally, we think of your career. What dreams do you still want to fulfill in MMA? This fight was my 35th fight. I face each fight as a dream. I think the UFC is the MMA World Cup, the best in the world or in the UFC. So every fight's a war. And for me to, to win a fight, it's, it's a dream come true. You'll, and I know that at each fight I win gets me closer to the belt. So I face each fight as a, as a dream and my biggest dream is a belt. But mission accomplished now, I'm going to go back home and relax. I, I feel like I, I fulfilled my mission. Thank you everyone.
Hello. Mr. Gaston, first question here. Uh, in your post-fight post interview with Ryan Sand, you said that you wanted to fight uh, Anderson Silva, Silva but in the past few weeks, mas nas uh, semanas, you, you said that você you disse que wanted to go back. Você you still wanted another chance at 170. Uh, after this performance, did you change your mind? Now you want to stay at 185. You're unbeaten at 185 here in UFC. You, você tá aqui no, uh, did you accept the fact that, that you are a middleweight right now? É um... I said I wanted to um, eu disse que eu get a fight that interests me at middleweight. And if I get a fight that interests me at middleweight, then I would definitely stay. And um, Anderson is one of those guys that would definitely interest me in fight. We saw that Vitor started the first round pretty well, actually. Até As melhor do que no, nas últimas uh, lutas dele. What do you think that o que you você acha que to, to stop você fez para parar from para a grande estrela? Oh, well. We're, I was well prepared for anything that, that Vitor brought, you know, I'm, I'm training under Rafael Cordero and he's been, you know, he knows Vitor's game from 20 years ago and up until now, so I just followed instructions and, you know, I, I worked a lot these last few months, you know, and you just see the end result of, of all the work. Thank you. Thank you. Você parece que tinha mais alguma coisa para falar em cima e não pôde. Tem alguma coisa que você queria dizer? Eu só queria agradecer a todos, agradecer a minha equipe, a Kings MMA, agradecer a minha família por todo o apoio. E agradecer a Deus por tudo. E você... I think you were very. It seemed, you seem very unafraid. Você even though Vitor looked a lot bigger, and he's always an intimidating presence. You seem to be just pretty relaxed in there. Uh, how did you feel? And even when he connected, how did you think? What did you think of his power? Yeah. Um, you know, we were expecting him to be fast. We were expecting him to be strong. We were expecting him to be powerful. And you know, it was just well prepared. Everything was well prepared. We were expecting him to be powerful. And I was just well prepared for everything that Vitor was bringing to the table, you know, and um, you see the you see the end result. Since the beginning of the activities here in, in Fortaleza, you were talking about the receptiveness of the people. Everyone was very close to you and singing tonight as well after the fight. Everyone sang happy birthday. In general, since you got here, did that surprise you? How receptive everyone was here. Yes, I was surprised with the reception and very thankful as well. I felt at home. I felt at home and I felt very well. And about the fight, in some moments, we saw that Kelvin was a little bit more respective. And since the beginning, we've said that you respect him a lot. Were there moments when you didn't move forward, when you were, were respecting? Did you compose yourself a little bit more in this fight against Vitor Belfort? I want to get in and I want to get out as quick as possible. And Vitor is a warrior. I have a lot of respect for him. He's a warrior. Boa noite. É, Good por evening. Foi falado sobre é, a receptividade do povo brasileiro. We were talking about the receptiveness of the Brazilian crowd. Do you expect to use that in the future? You think you'll be fighting here in Brazil again? Do you, do you have that desire because of how receptive the people were here? I really liked it. I really liked the reception. Like I said, I felt at home. I want to fight again in Brazil. I liked it a lot. It was a great experience. I want to fight again here. Possibly in Rio in June. Calling out uh, Anderson, is this a fight that, that you want next because of his name? É, você quer essa luta por causa do nome, da atenção que isso tudo traz? Ou é pelo estilo? É, você quer se testar contra ele? It's a combination of, uh, of all, a lot of things. You know, he's a big name, he's another legend, and he's ranked above me. I want to keep moving up the rankings, and, and I want the fight that that'll get me, that eventually lead me to the title shot. A disputa de cinturão. Is that a fight that uh, you're coming up with and you're asking for, the, for it? Or did someone 
from the UFC already approached you with the possibility of matching up with Anderson in Rio? Yeah, it's something that I talk with my management team. Um, are you completely f uh, fully healed? No, no injuries from this fight. You believe you're ready for June third? Yeah, 100% free. Um, I got nothing booked. So uh, if we want to go and make it happen in June third in Rio, I would love for it to happen. So uh, you faced uh, in middleweight so far, Tim Kennedy, who was away from the sport for like two years or something. Uh, Vitor, who's 39 years old, and uh, now you're you're calling out Anderson. Uh, who's 40 years old too. Uh, do you believe that uh, maybe you, you should get like a, an opponent a little closer to your age maybe <laughs> or in a more activity than those guys? Sure, I don't care who I fight. You know, I, I want the big fights. Uh, I want the fights that will keep me moving up the rankings. So I, I don't care who I fight. I, I, it's just Anderson. He's a guy that I respect a lot, and he's a big name, he's a legend, and, you know, one of the greatest of all time. So, uh, you know, those are the kind of fighters that I want to fight. I don't want to keep moving back. I want to keep moving forward. Um, and uh, wh what would it take for you to come back to 170? Would you need to maybe lose uh, a fight at, at middleweight or is it something that uh, uh, you know it, it would have to be a, a title shot straight away against like Tyron Woodley or something it would have to be against a number one contender I believe um, you know, I, I, I'm one of the best welterweights, and uh, if I go back down, it would have to be for a number one contender fight. And, and if, I, if I may, just one more. Um, to come back to 170, uh, I, you would have to cut weight again, and you've been looking awesome since you... You moved up. Is that something that you believe fighters should do more often, you know, move up and fight closer to their weight rather than cutting a, a huge amount of weight to, to fight looking Absolutely. bigger? Absolutely. Um, I felt great this whole week. I ate the whole week. I ate all the way up to, up to weigh-in. So, uh, you know, I, I was happy the whole week. Uh, but I just know my, my capabilities. I know that my chances at winning gold are... are Really good at, at well to win. Kelvin, primeiramente parabéns. Kelvin, first of all, congratulations. You said previously that you would go back to welterweight if, if you won or lost, but you got a big win. Do you intend to stay in this division, or are you thinking of going back? I want to fight the best. And I just said, I want to fight Anderson. It's a fight that interests me to fight against Anderson. And if I can get that fight, I'm going to stay in this division. If not, I'm going to go to welterweight to fight the number one contender. You switched teams a little while back from Alliance to Rafael Cordero. Do you attribute that all that success to training? Of course, I, I, I owe a lot to Rafael Cordero. I found a home at King's MMA. I think Rafael Cordero and I are great and I'm very happy where I'm at. Kevin, good evening. So you came to Brazil to face Vitor Belfort, the year that he's exactly 20 years after he began fighting, a long history. Have you stopped to think about that, that you're part of Vitor Belfort's history? I never thought of that. I'm very thankful for this opportunity. You said that in your promo that the fight was sold as as a, a fight of, of generations, and and you said that now was your time, and that now Vitor was in the past. How is that in your mind now? How are you thinking? I, I, I wanted to show that, the difference in generations. I said that and, and I showed it inside of the octagon.
Você, como eu disse, agora você faz As parte I said, now you're part né? of history. <laughs> Vitor Belfort's history. E, e isso para você, você acha que isso vai For te you, dar do, um impulso? Do you think that's going to get you further in your career? Was that a mark in your career? Uh, <laughs> que não entendi na pergunta. Sim, é que a partir de hoje você acha que, today, hoje, que a sua vitória hoje Do you think that your victory today te, takes you further? Te, claro, claro. É, isso. Claro, of e, course. isso me levanta. Yes, é, it uma nova gets me way up. It's a new e, phase in my career. E, eu acho que estou estou em uma fase nova it's, it's minha a new stage in my career right now and estou uh, feliz por I'm, and I'm happy for about the future. Aos 20 anos do you expect to no, do UFC? have also 20 é, years of ca sabe, career in, inside sabe, the UFC? Feliz Who knows? Isso, I'd, I'd be very sabe. happy with that, but you never Parabéns. know. Obrigado. Congratulations. Thank you. Me again. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Você falou sobre a disputa de título, que seria algo que te interessaria no peso médio, mas tem a situação do GSP vindo e ele vai disputar o cinturão. Você mesmo disse que achou um pouco injusto he can come in and just the big fight just uma grande luta uma luta de título uh when it comes to pursuing the title in the middle a little bit a little bit because you know what's the fight of having contenders what's the habit of, what's the point of having rankings if we're not going to follow the rankings we're not going to follow the number one contenders you know um, it just doesn't make any sense um you know now now everybody wants those big money fights you know and um It just doesn't make any sense uh, to have any rankings uh, if, if we're going to keep doing that kind of kind of stuff. And how is it for you to get to just plan é for that? Because it makes even a career plan kind of seem... Right. Um, you know, just I just got to keep winning fights, keep making noise. Um, I'm not a very loud person. I'm not a very obnoxious person. But the way that I want to keep making noise is beating big names. Vencendo grandes Thank nomes you. e é assim que eu
Good evening, Good evening Victor. Victor. First of all, what went wrong in the fight? What didn't you expect? <laughs> Everything went wrong. It was his night. Since the first knockdown when I got back up, I wasn't too awake yet. So I wasn't able to, to work the right techniques. I was very anxious trying to do a lot in the first round. I didn't have the patience. And it cost me. You had a, a better performance than in the past two fights, in my opinion. You were quicker, you kicked more. Did you feel better than in the last fights? I was very well prepared. I trained a lot with my team. It's frustrating because I was doing well until a certain point. I was confident that I was going to knock him out. And everything went happen in reverse. But that's it. We have to reinvent ourselves. And it's, it won't be the first, it won't be the last. I mean, I hope it is the last because in July I want to do my last fight on my contract. I think it's it's my time to to finish my my chapter in this as a professional fighter. I think that my body is not the same to train, a lot of pain. It's over 14 surgeries that I've done. I think I've I've given, I've left everything inside the octagon. It wasn't in the best way. I'm sad to not give give this win to my fans here in Brazil, but it's part of it. The sport is like this, and it was Kelvin's night. He shined. You said it's the last fight on your contract, but it'd be the last fight of your career. It would be. Or if they create a, a organization just for the legends, then then I can extend it a little bit more. But to to train for five round fan is is very sacrificing for my body. I was very well physically, but he connected a few good shots. I was able to recover the first time, but in the second time he he landed flush and it was his night. How much does it hurt to leave the arena tonight with your third defeat in a row, something you didn't expect, does that bother you? Does that give you more motivation to train harder and, and to get on the, the fight card in Rio? To be able to finish your career with a... Pain is pain. I'm very upset because we put a lot into this training, a lot of time. We're doing well. My team and I were certain that we would leave with a victory, but that's life. Right now I'm focused on my businesses. I'm opening a franchise of a chain of gyms. My, my second mission is to be able to help humanity for people to re reinvent themselves. I see people with a lot of fear about r taking risks, not only physically but emotionally. People are very fearful of trying. And I don't see, I don't see why not try. And I really wanted to be able to finish my career as, as a professional athlete. This year marks 20 years of, of my career since I won the belt. And I was sure I was going to leave with a victory tonight, but it wasn't tonight. And that's it. I'll, I'll go back home, enjoy my family, reinvent myself, sit down with my trainers and, and see what, what lies ahead for me. Vitor. This fight was sold as the experience as the youth. Do you think that that showed in the results? And another question, do you think that in your last fight, do you think it, your last fight could be a, a rematch against Anderson Silva, who was one of the most epic fights? Or do you want that to happen? Well, I think that uh, I was inexperienced. I did a lot of things in, in the first round. I was, I was hungry for the win, for all or nothing. 
when I got back up from the first knockdown, I, I wasn't patient. I think it cost me. The lack of patience cost me the fight. I wanted to win the fight. And it, it ended up falling in Kelvin's court. And my last fight in my contract, I don't want to fight in Rio against a Brazilian. I like to fight against someone who's not a Brazilian. I'd really like to be able to finish my, my career as a professional. I think I deserve that. To see where MMA has gotten. Like tonight's fight on, on TV Globo in Brazil. It's, it's very sad to not be able to give your people a win for your family, your trainers. But I leave with, with my head up high and I did my best. I have to recognize that tonight was Kelvin's night. Vitor, how much did the result of tonight's fight influence your decision that your, last, that your next fight would be your last? Is that something you've already decided that or would you consider extending your career? It was something that I already decided, I just hadn't announced it. I say again, I reiterate that I think that It'd be great to have a, a division for the legends. We'd be able to give you guys a lot more content for the fans. But we'd be able to bring in a lot of people that are in retirement with new rules, with new sized gloves, with a reduced amount of time, longer rest period between rounds. I think that the fans and you as the media could see something that would be very gratifying. We miss seeing certain athletes competing, but but five rounds and fighting for the belt and this youth coming up, it's not as easy for, for us to train. Training is what's sacrificing. I see that in my body. From from my era, there's, there's no one left. I know how hard it, that can be, but my team helped me a lot and it's not easy. Training is very tiring. I'm sure that if this league was created in the UFC, it would, it would be something that would revolutionize the MMA market. With that, I would be able to extend. You could, you'd be able to see a little bit more of Vitor Belfort. And talking about the idea of fighting in Rio, like you said, your body is not responding as it did before. You feel a lot of pain. You've had a lot of surgeries. But for that fight to happen, it's in three months. Would you be willing after this fight? Fight after being knocked out to, to sacrifice one last time to, to be able to I, I'm trying to understand how, how much you desire to fight yeah without sacrifice there's no glory I get out of here and feeling like I let this victory slip I think I was too reckless and I paid for it it's part of it Kelvin was the winner and I recognize that but I think I was too reckless and wanted to go in there and knock him out. And uh, the result was opposite of what I wanted. And it would be a second win, but uh, I, would, I would work hard to be able to fight on my, my hometown, and especially in my last fight as a professional. My question was about what you, what you kind of just said about that new division. Uh, not masters. It would be it would be the legends. You already talked a little bit about how it would be, but my first question is: Is that something that you're just thinking about, or is there other people that other fighters that that are also legends that think just like you? I'm sure that. I represent them. I know that if the, we had this division, as many fighters came up to me and said, what a great idea. And, you know, when, when you retire, you'd have an extra job. You'd have work. I have the whole idea of, I've written everything down. So you have the whole project. I have the project. I can show it to you tomorrow. 
I think this division is ready. You as the media would love to see that. Wouldn't you like to see that? People coming back and on, with, with rules that maybe I can say three things that would really help. No elbows, no knees. The rounds will be three minutes long. Time on the ground will be 30 seconds. So the fight will have more action. You guys will be even more entertained. The rest time between rounds will be a minute and a half, so you can sell more advertisement space. So I think it around the world it would sell. It's something that that's missing. It's lacking. And with that, you you can create new idols and the new guys coming up. And what, what would that be based on? On time? Or in titles? And there, there could be a title. There could be three divisions, three weight classes. You can do three weight divisions. Medium, light, and heavy. So it's an idea. I have that idea because I, I want to continue fighting, but I have to recognize that there comes a time when to fight this way, the training is very tiring for for someone who's been fighting for 20 years and is a little bit older. I don't think it's not easy. You know, everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end. My body's not the same. But I like competing. I want to compete. Let's see. And this new journey. What would you do? Would you be a coach? Well, are you going to work with up and coming guys? I really like helping athletes. Uh, I have a lot of affection for this sport. I like helping people. I'm opening a chain of gyms and I want to help people take care of their physical part and also the emotional. I think it's a, a new concept that I'm creating that people are going to have a one hour training sessions, they're going to burn a thousand calories. We're opening this gym now in the US. And I want to give back, I want to give back to people and everyone that's always supported me and be able to help people have a quality of life. I think to rewrite history is something that we all should do, but many of us we just watch. We just watch this theater of life and we, we're afraid of, of taking a new, pla new path, letting things behind and, and, and controlling our lives and we have to take care of, take control of our lives and decide what we want to do. Congratulations, thank you. We spoke in January and you, you were coming off two losses and you didn't consider that this was such a, a bad phase you were going through, but after this defeat, what do you think? What do you think of your career in this phase you're going through? I'm positive. I leave here with my held up high. I went in there and I gave my best. It wasn't how I wanted. Kelvin shine tonight. But it's a, a matter of, of pride and uh, everything that I've done for this sport and everything that I've achieved. And man can't be judged by their, their defeats. You need to be judged for everything. I think the way that, that you lose and the way that you fight. I leave here with my held up high. I know I went in there and fought as a warrior, but he was better. I couldn't believe it. When, when the shots were landing, I couldn't believe it. I thought, man, this is not real, this is not happening, but that's life. We have to learn to overcome our, our difficulties and, and write our history. My losses were to great champions. These new guys are, are really tough. And they had a better night, and I have to recognize that as an athlete that they deserve it. You've been saying that you want to work with the UFC and help the sport grow. Is that really your plan after you, you retire? Definitely. I always wanted to, to be able to help the sport, this organization. I have to thank Frank, Lorenzo and Dana 
for creating and investing in the UFC and today IMG that they believe in the sport they bought it and it's making it grow here in Brazil TV Globo I really want to be able to help especially in this division with the legends if that's created it'd be something that's very interesting that could bring a lot and we'd be able to see our idols the icons fighting again and we will be able to let athletes continue. I wanted you to talk about the names that, that a few names that you'd like to face in this last fight. Right off the top of my head, there, there's not anyone in specific. I just don't want it to be against a, a Brazilian here in Brazil. No name, not even a foreigner. No, not off the top of my head. We have to sit with the UFC and see which opponent would, would make an interesting fight. I never refused any fights. I always fought the, the toughest guys in the division. I, I don't pick fights. But in this last fight, I, I wanted to have a special fight for my fans. Let's see. We'll, we'll see if that's possible. What's important is to be able to go back home right now and hug my family and relax a little bit. It was tough. I dedicated myself and unfortunately it wasn't my night. Thank you, Vitor. Thank you, everyone. All the best.